Sports is brought to you by All Out Auto Repair, home of the $46 Saskatchewan and $66 Alberta Safety Inspection. Your complete automotive repair. Well, Moses, the Bobcats are back in action on home ice tonight. Yeah, it's, and hopefully things will turn around for them. The Bobcats look to bounce back after <laughs> dropping their first two games of the season when they host the Camaros Kodiaks. As Matt Schumont reports, with a win this evening, the Cats will be able to breathe a little easier. <laughs> It wasn't the way the Bobcats wanted to start the season, losing back-to-back -back games against rival Bonneville Pontiacs. But having three days off between games, the Orange and Black have been able to use the time to make some adjustments. We just need to work on our structure. Um, you know, in, the, in both games, the shots were pretty level. We're just going to have to clean up our act a little bit, so to speak, in, uh, in respect uh, you know, to what we're doing with the puck at what time. We've uh, gone over more structure and stuff, you know, first few weeks we didn't really have time to go over that we we're still picking the team out and we've been going over that these late past practices so should be good now we have a lot of time out there and we're just kind of panicking with the puck and with a lot of new guys and kind of getting used to the game you know it's a lot faster than where they played before so you know they still have to get used to the game and you know with practices are practices are way more intense than they were their next test won't be easy taking on a Camrose Kodiaks team who have come out of the gate strong taking their first two games Cameros is always a pretty gritty team. Uh, they work really hard. You know, they're always skilled and good. So I think it'll be a good test for us to see how it goes. I know they're going to be a physical club and, uh, you know, they're going to engage everywhere. You know, they're, they're really going to take away time and space. So we're just going to have to stick to our structure and be quick to, you know, to, to transition the puck to offense, that's for sure. Still early in the season, the Cats aren't hitting the panic button, but know with a win tonight, they can get momentum moving forward. It's huge. Like, Definitely, it'll turn the whole season around right from here if we get the win tomorrow. We're putting our, pre you know, the pressure on ourselves to work hard, and uh, and our guys did that, you know, last game. I mean, obviously, a couple mental errors cost us the game, but uh, that's that's part of the growing pains of being a young team. Puck draw for tonight's game is at 7:30 at the Civic. Matt Schumont, Newcastle Sports. As Matt mentioned, 7.30 tonight. We can't stress that enough. Puck drop at the Civic. Of course, uh, as you mentioned, the Camaros Kodiaks coming in to Lloyd Minster. Come on and cheer the Cats too as uh, head coach Ryan Parent, who's in, his, who's in search for his first win as AJHL coach. Now, after an up and down roller coaster ride in the preseason that ended with a lackluster 8 0 loss, the Pontiacs were perfect in their opening weekend of the regular season. But as Clayton Brown explains, the Bonneville team will have their hands full as they take on Fort McMurray tonight. Only a week after giving up seven goals in one period, the Pontiacs played much more disciplined over the weekend, giving up just four in the two games of a home and home. We got some timely saves. Um, we got some timely penalty kills. Those two are the, probably the biggest difference from uh, the Sherd Park last exhibition game we played. Um, you know, we found ways to win when the game was on the line. I think we came in with a lot of confidence, just we played to our strengths and uh, we came out with two wins and that's what we want to do off the bat, so we're just going to keep it going as long as we can. The quick start isn't something new for the Pontiacs, but with a less experienced team than previous years, it is even more crucial than before. We won the, both games in different ways, um, maintaining a lead and, and uh, uh, coming back after a deficit. And so I think certainly great lessons to be able to go back to and understand that's how you have to win hockey games. Bonneville has a tougher test tonight as they find out how they stack up against one of the more experienced teams in the AJHL as they take on the Fort McMurray Oil Barons. That I think is going to be an indicator of where our mindset of our hockey team is and where the character level of our hockey team is. Um, so I think it's a very telling game for us. And we've got to look and push and, and take and seize the opportunity to go 3-0. It's a tough building to win in, but we're definitely going to try our best and we're going to take it to them out there. Puck drop is at 7.30 in Fort McMurray. In Bonneville, Clayton Brown, New Cap Sports. All right, back to Lloyd Minster. Forget about the NHL lockout. Lloyd Minster hockey players are having enough trouble getting on the ice. The city was trying to turn two service sports center pads into year-long ice rinks. Instead, ice will not even be in until November 1st. When they got into it, they found out that it wasn't built the way it was designed to be built. And uh, they run into complications trying to get this new uh, renovation put in place. The LMHA is making changes to ensure that no one misses games. Ice is being put in the Archie Miller now uh, two months before usual and some teams will play more road games. 
we are bumping some of our programs back a little bit. We're going to take off the start of it, but we're going to add to the end of it. So, I mean, hockey will be played. It will be alive and well within the city. Any changes will be posted on LloydminsterMinorHockey.com. And that is your first look at sports. Stick around. Gerard will have your weather details next. The Holy Rosary Raiders got a bit of a wake-up call last week, getting destroyed by the St. Paul Lions 48-19. But as Matt Schumont tells us, the black and silver will look to move forward as they prepare for the Bonneville Voyageurs. It wasn't the result the Raiders were looking for last week. Not only did they get embarrassed 48-19, they also lost in every aspect of the game. St. Paul came out with, uh, with a pretty solid effort all the way through and we just didn't match their intensity and it was turning to be a pretty long day for us. We didn't come out strong enough, we didn't come out hard enough off the ball. They beat us, they're stronger, uh, ready than we weren't. Being a force to be reckoned with last season, the loss came as a wake-up call, letting the team know they'll have to play all four quarters if they want to be successful. I told the kids before, like nobody in the league owes us anything. We got to earn, we got to earn every win. Like nobody's given us anything, so we have to uh, prepare every week. Um, you know, better than we did last week, I guess mentally. We need some things to work on. It wasn't just uh, we just didn't show up that game. We need to fix some things, but I think we're going to do it. The Raiders now get ready for a Bonneville team who are also coming off a loss last week. In the past, the Voyagers have been a passing team, but the Raiders are expecting a more balanced attack. We'll expect, you know, balanced eye um, on their offensive side, and they'll spread things out a bit with the pass. So we'll expect good athletes and, and tough physical football, and we'll prepare the best we can for that. They're going to come out and run the ball. I think that's what they've done mostly this year, and that... I know from playing with some of their players that they have decently good passers and some faster guys. Kickoff for Friday's game is at 5 p.m. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports.